everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Showcase, episode 23. I'm Jamie Hari uh, from the Marvel Database. Today we're going to be talking about the mid-season finale of Arrow. Um, Billy, why don't you tell us what happened in the f- mid-season finale? All right, this was a crazy episode. There were so many big reveals. Uh, we saw Ray Palmer revealed his uh, Adam suit for the first time, which looks incredible. Uh, we've been doing, seeing a lot of flashbacks telling the origin story of Katana, and we saw what appears to be her death at the hands of China White, but also her husband, Maceo, who is dead in the comic books, is apparently still alive in the present day and a member of the League of Assassins. Uh, the Thea Merlin arc has been expanded on. Apparently Thea was drugged by Merlin, and she's the person who killed Sarah, which is also a crazy reveal. And then at the end of it, the climax, the big thing everybody's talking about, is uh, Oliver t- Oliver Queen challenges Ra's al Ghul to a fight to the death, and Ra's al Ghul stabs him in the chest and kicks him off a cliff. And that's the end of our episode. Thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, I'm, well, what is really exciting me about the show right now is that it, it feels like the entire run of the show, it has kind of felt like we're just watching a Batman series and they have been labeling it Green Arrow. But gee, this show, it has gotten, it has hit peak Batman at this point. Uh, even like the opening line, oh my God, where he, he says, Merry Christmas. To uh, <laughs> the Detective Lance, and Detective Lance says, "Oh, I feel bad. I didn't get you anything." And he says, "You keep this city safe." That's his, <laughs> that's so Batman. <laughs> Absolutely. So there was a lot of character development. We looked at, uh, you know, the guy has being built up and built up and built up as as you know a warrior unto her own. But as it turns out, she was just a uh, a weaponized, you know. Um, piece of bait to have Merlin um, control Arrow in a very manipulative way as he does. What do we think about the, the development of Thea? Do, do we think that that's sort of the end of her line? She's just a little more hardcore but same old Thea or what do you think? That Also that scene where, where Arrow and Thea were fighting one of my favorite fight scenes in the entire series. I love that we actually got that moment. That was fun. I... I was sort of mixed on Theo's development in this episode. I really like the direction they're taking. I really think that the, her being Merlin's protege is like an interesting, cool way to give her more to do. I really didn't like the brainwashing thing. I really would have liked if it was just like, no, Thea did a really bad fucking thing at the behest of Merlin. And now Ollie's got to deal with it. That said, I loved the scene where Merlin revealed the brainwashing and was like, ah, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been a huge fan of her arc just because she's like, for the last season, I guess she was sort of played as Roy's love interest <laughs> and it wasn't really the same. She wasn't a person anymore and now she's a person. Now she's like, Somebody who's taken control of her life and she's being yeah. awesome. And uh, I think they're sort of playing her up to maybe become speedy, like the. That's right. right? Yeah, yes. speedy. And uh, except Thea, the Queen Speedy. Yeah. Even though Roy is speedy, but obviously he can't be speedy well, forever. In the, in the last episode, they started calling Roy Arsenal. And I love that they did that, like, organically. I just want to go back to that scene Billy was talking about where uh, Green Arrow and Thea are fighting in her uh, flat, her, her apartment house, <laughs> where she she clearly does not recognize him as her brother, even though, like, I can see his entire face. <laughs> Why can't she see his entire face beyond the no. mask? Then she <laughs> leaps out the window like, yeah, can't catch me, stupid Green Arrow. And then, like, Five minutes into the episode later, Oliver is in her apartment as himself, and he's like, what happened? And she's like, nothing, <laughs> nothing happened. There was nothing yeah. happening here. And it's so obvious. Yeah, Theo, what a handsome gentleman broke our window. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, they've somehow find, found a way to make those secret identity shenanigans very fun because it's not Oliver constantly being like, oh, I have to hide my secret. He's just using it to be like like kind of a manipulative dick a little bit. 
What did you guys think about the other the other kind of what the hell moment in the episode where they get the DNA back and Felicity's like, "Well, we found the murderer of Sarah, and you never guess who it is. It's Oliver Queen." Like, and you're, he's like, "Well, no, no, it's not me." And she's like, "Well, it must be you. It's your DNA." And then they're like, "Oh, well, there's there's got to be another another answer." Like, I, it's I, like, "Oh, of course. All this time we built up to it, and now Green Arrow's the killer. Like, that's where they're gonna go with it." I loved that his first reaction... Well, like, his first reaction was, what? How can this be? And then his second reaction was, God damn, Malcolm Merlin, I'm going to go kill him. I'm going to go kill him. I'm going to kill him. That was, that was nice that he knows who the guy messing with his life at every single stage is. It felt like it kind of came out of nowhere. Like, you, you sort of feel, or I sort of felt like when Oliver was going after Merlin, he was unjustified in doing that. Like, I'm like, man... You don't know. You have no evidence. Why are you just you just hate this guy? And then he's like, "It really was me." <laughs> and you're like, "God damn it!" To be fair, that guy is a jerk. Yeah, just a jerk. So, so I've got to ask a question. Um, why did I, I, this? I just generally don't know. Why did Green Arrow think he could beat? Uh, Rachel Ghoul. Like that. That whole conversation was very short and sweet. Like I'm gonna go fight him. Oh well, we all believe in you. Like. What the hell? No one, everyone in their right mind knew Rachel Ghoul would kill him and pretty quick. Why did he suddenly think he could do it? Because he's the protagonist, idiot. <laughs> well, I think he knew that he wasn't going to make it, which I think maybe was his plan, but not like his plan was to die, but maybe his plan was to fake die? Well, either way, it feels like it feels like the attitude he came into it with is not like, okay, maybe I'm not going to defeat Rachel Ghoul, but then even still, he is giving his life in exchange for Thea's. Yeah. yeah He's sacrificing I, himself, but only if he absolutely friggin' had to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, th I think you're probably right. I think that there's probably a plan B, like he's got some trick he learned, where you rub your hands together, or something you learned on the island, like, do, like, you know, ancient Chinese healing on yourself after your dad or something. We've all seen the five-minute YouTube video on how to heal a stab wound by rubbing your hands together, Jamie. You don't need to explain it to us. <laughs> but I will link to it in the comments below. <laughs> oh, I, I do, another thing that I thought in this episode was kind of weird is, uh, what, I don't understand why it's so important to Laurel that she keeps the death of her sister a secret. Right, at this point, it's just gotten kind of silly. It's to the point where she she has Sarah Lance's name on a grave in a public, and she's literally like standing over a tombstone that reads Sarah Lance. No one can ever know. And Nobody it, can find out. And yet another case of Thea being ridiculous. She walks up to that grave. And says, what are you doing here? And Laurel's like, nothing. There's nobody here. I just come here sometimes. Sarah Lance Grave. That both <laughs> parts of that. Thea being like, who are you talking to? Like, Thea, you're you're in a fucking cemetery, Thea. You can, you can figure that shit out yourself. By yourself. And then also, Laurel, why was Laurel, like, embarrassed? She was like, oh, oh, she got me talking to myself. Well, why was Thea there in the first place? Like, what does Thea walk home from work through the cemetery? Like, is well, that her route? She said that she was going to visit her uh, her mom. Oh, okay, I missed that part. Then I feel stupid now. Maybe it's okay, she guys. wasn't brainwashed, and she really is just being a jerk. See, that's what I thought at first when she came on. I was the wheels were turning in my head, where I was like, "Is Thea the killer?" And I thought she was just rubbing it in. Like, what happened? <laughs> Are you okay? Did did someone die? Did someone die, Laura? Oh, <laughs> Sarah died. Nobody could have killed her unless they were really smart and awesome. I feel like all of these things that sort of stretch our, our limits of disbelief are not because of, like, they're because they have to establish this tension that's, like, must be in a CW production. And I know every time we talk about these shows, I'm like, oh, the CW, your soapiness. Ah, I could... Clean all of my manly dirt off. <laughs> I guess I feel I'm kind of developing like a Stockholm syndrome for it. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I can't, to love it. I can't tell if I have Stockholm syndrome or I just deep down love soap opera stuff like <laughs> to my core. I don't know. It's probably the second one. Let's be honest here. It's kind of like Smallville. Like Smallville is your only Superman show in this time, day and age, and then you watch it and you're like. This is okay. 
then you're like, okay, this is kind of getting tired, and then it goes like, okay, this is getting really bad, and now she's a witch, and then it becomes <laughs> awesome. so you you're rewarded for sticking around for so long. So maybe we're waiting for that, but Let's, uh, unfortunately, we're being rewarded earlier. Yeah. Let's talk about Arrow. Uh, not Arrow. What, what am I? Let's talk about uh, Adam. How dope was that Adam suit? That pretty was dope. pretty dope. Tastic. Uh, I'm. I I've read things online where I I kind of like a theory as to where this could go, and I really want this to happen. Where just the first episode when it comes back is just like Adam, Adam, defender of Starling City. It's just like <laughs> oh. And he just takes in the Arrow crew because they're like, what do we do? And they all like him much better than they like Oliver. And they're like, oh, yeah, this it's is like, way better. You're nice, and you you have money, and, like, we don't live in a basement. But how do they how do they fight alongside a guy whose main power is just being super tiny? Like they, they, He needs somebody to throw him at things. <laughs> <laughs> that also, interesting things with uh, Ray Palmer's origin story where he spends a lot of time in this episode talking about his uh, his dead ex-wife, and they used... And, and I, like, I am relatively familiar with Ray Palmer's backstory. His... I don't know anybody in the comics named Anna, so that is a totally new character. I was surprised that they didn't use for his ex-wife the name Jean Loring, his actual wife in the comics for a while, which makes me believe that she's going to show up at a later date. I could see that romantic rival to Felicity. That that's that seems very likely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of like, I kind of liken this to when uh, Green Arrow showed up in Smallville. Like it, there was a very brief period there where there was a few, almost pro- level of protagonists in that story. Like, do you think that the same will be true of Adam? Like, he'll have a full season or two of, you know, his quality screen time. That's my theory, actually, for the second half of the season. Is that the first episode or two or three, Oliver stays dead, and Starling is just dealing with Diggle and Arsenal and the Atom to kind of fill the void left by Arrow while we figure out how to bring Arrow back to life. Yeah. yeah. Lo- they did that. Oh, whoa. What if he falls down the cliff and gets washed away by the ocean? And he's, like, trapped on an island for several years, <laughs> desperately yeah. trying to get back. That would be awesome. I hope they do that story. That wasn't where I thought you were going with that. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I, I like that better. some Aquaman. <laughs> yeah, I was totally expecting Aquaman. <laughs> yes, that is all I want. Well, Finale. Let's, let's talk about Arrow that. is the story of Oliver Queen becoming Aquaman. <laughs> that wasn't where I thought you were going with that either. But let's talk about let's talk about how we're gonna get Oliver back. I want to talk about Lazarus Pitts. Lazarus Pitts. That's a good point. I uh, it's. I mean, Roz has that line like, "No one's challenged me to a fight in 67 years," and it's like, "You're not 67." What's going on here? <laughs> so, I I mean, maybe it'll be like, I have these special herbs, or whatever. For the uninitiated, in the comic books, Rachel Ghoul is an immortal uh, eco-terrorist who has been around for centuries, and he achieves immortality by bathing himself in these weird underground rejuvenating pools of molten something called Lazarus Pits. Which make you insane when you come out of them, and his—he's nearly as immortal as the debate over how to pronounce his name. Yes, yeah. It is it, the original Dennis O'Neill, the creator of Rachel Ghoul, pronounces it Rachel Ghoul, but pretty much every uh, live media adaptation, Batman the Animated Series, has pronounced it Ra's Al Ghoul. I think Batman Begins no, pronounced it Ra's Al Ghoul. Did they? Okay, I'm wrong then. Uh, but so it's not. Yeah. There's precedence for calling it for saying Ross instead of Raish. But to be doubly clear, it is actually not an invented name. It is actually an Arabic term that means, like, devil's head, head or demon's head? Head of the demon, yes. Right. So I'm sure someone who spoke Arabic could probably tell us. But they're not here today, so we're going to go with Raish. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, the whole the idea is that if Raz al- Raish, if Raish al Ghul can H- come back from the can re- become immortal using these Lazarus pits, surely, because no he doesn't just become immortal after bathing in them. He has to bathe in them, like, every some 
once every lifetime, basically. So if, say, we want Ollie to come back, he might have to bathe in one of these... I keep saying bathe, it feels dirty. But he might have to get in one of these pits and then get out again. And if he does, he might become evil because they cause insanity, or he might, like... Uh, temporary uh, insanity. Temporary insanity, but temporary insanity could last a, key, a few episodes. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I hope it does. This is true. Like the red kryptonite episodes of Smallville? <laughs> we keep going back to Smallville. What? I'm what? Sure you like didn't it. like that show? You didn't like that show? <laughs> I don't know. So I, I think what's going to, personally, my take on it is what's going to happen in the second half of the season. I agree. Uh, Adam is going to be definitely a little bit more of a, a prominent character. I think you'll probably see Diggle uh, in the, the, the Green Hood just to, you know, keep the city sort of believing that he's alive to hide it. So, and then I also potentially predict some sort of initial clash between the two halves where it's not until Felicity figures it out or something like that that she, you know, they fight original, uh, initially when they first meet or something like that, maybe? What do you guys think? And also, it seems like we're going to be seeing a lot more Arsenal. I think he's going to be taken to a much larger role in the series. Maybe I don't want to, though. How to. dare you, after all he's done for this city. <laughs> I want to see less of Laurel, by the way. So much less of Laurel. But more of Wildcat. <laughs> Speaking of less of Laurel, I've been wanting to say this for a while. I think I think what should happen is Sarah should get into one of these Lazarus pits and come back as Black Canary and then somebody punches Laurel in the head so it explodes so she can't come back. <laughs> I have, I have been kind of enjoying Laurel in the last couple episodes with her suddenly turning into, like, uh, like alcoholic Jack Bauer. <laughs> That's been kind of fun to watch. Yeah, kind of. Also, as much as I would like Sarah to come back, it would sort of make Nyssa being so upset sort of weird. Like, it's the principle of the thing. You don't, you don't kill people. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot that we have a magic pool that brings people back to life. Sorry, I overreacted. She, she might not even know about because if she's like only 23 or something, then he might have, she might never have known that he was reviving himself. Is it like how, uh, like when you, your parents, uh, when your dog dies, just tell you that it's the same dog? <laughs> <laughs> I buy it. That makes sense. All right, so we're getting pretty close to running out of time here, folks. So I'm gonna run around one more time. Final thoughts on the series, uh, on the season so far, and on the uh, series season fin mid finale. Uh, Justice, we'll start with you. What do you think? Um, I gotta admit, this first half of season three, after the amazing, amazing season two, I was a little colder on it. This finale brought me back around. That final fight between Raish and Ollie was fantastic. I honestly thought Ollie was going to, if not make it, not get shanked and tossed off a cliff. I'm really excited to see where the series goes from here. I can't wait for it to come back. Excellent. Thank you. Kyle? Uh, I think I'm a little bit different than Justice. I think the, the first part of the season was kind of more established than the previous seasons. Like, he's kind of in his groove as a, as a vigilante, and his supporting cast is pretty well established. And we're just kind of getting, you know... The stories we would get later on in the career, which I think is more interesting than the, the earlier establishing yourself as a vigilante kind of stuff. So I think that now that we're in that phase and we've kind of got this huge cliffhanger, I think I'm, I'm really excited to see where they take it after this. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. All right, Rab, what's your take? Well, if you remember the previous Arrow episode that we did, I was pretty vocal about how I was not a huge fan of the show, but I have, it, since season three began at least, I have grown to appreciate it more, I think. And I'm actually looking forward to seeing what comes up. Not that I, not that I wasn't, but I mean, I'm more looking forward. I'm engaged in looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next, because I really want to know. All right, Rob, I'm with you. Billy. 
I love I love this show, and I love how crazy and whacked out it's getting. I know in the first season they were sticking very hard to this premise of Arrow is the DC universe without superpowers, and you saw all of these like gritty street level versions of superpowered characters, but translated into a more realistic world. And they, it's like they've completely reversed their position on that. And I love that now we're seeing. Oliver Queen still as that guy who has no powers and a very, very simple weapon that he uses to deal with all problems, having to deal with these people who have, like, incredible, who are, like, I don't want to say God level, but dealing with people who are greater than himself in many ways. I agree. And and on the note of the weapons, we all saw a few episodes ago the boxing glove, right? Yeah! Oh, my God. <laughs> that was yeah, awesome. I lit. I cheered alone in my apartment. I did that. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so anyway, that, absolutely. The, uh, I'm looking forward as well. Um, I've actually been really enjoying every episode one by one since about the mid of second season. I think it's finally hit the peak. I'm I'm with Kyle actually. It's just we're we're established. We're rocking every episode right now. Uh, but uh, that's all we have uh, time for for today, so I'm actually just going to pose a question out to everybody. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. Um, how will Arrow come back? Did he actually die, or is this a plot or a ploy? And if he did die, how will he come back? Will it be just as simple as the Lazarus Pits, or is there something more uh, uh, unique and interesting coming? Anyway, thank you very much for joining us for episode 23. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Cheers. And that's a wrap for another episode of the Comic Book Showcase. Join us again live via chat or Twitter next week. Like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And to learn more about today's topics, check out the Marvel and DC databases on Wikia, the ultimate resources for comic book information anywhere.